Okay, hey everybody, welcome to uh, our weekly uh, webinar here, the Inside Real Estate Success Strategies webinars. Um, Annalisa, can you hear me okay? I had a little difficulty turning this on. I can hear you. I, I too have had mic issues today, so, but yeah, you sound loud and clear. Okay, great. And my screen should be showing. We have our doc up there. I'm sure Annalise is going to drop that to everybody who's watching live. Yes, did. Webinar. Yep. So uh, just a kind of a uh, logistical update before we get in. This is going to be the last webinar in this current series. Uh, you know, every six months or so, we kind of change things up. Uh, and we've been running this series for a while now. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, we will have some events, which we'll announce a la carte, but the current GoToWebinar link is going to die the, the Wednesday, 2 p.m. There won't be any for the foreseeable future. Uh, but what we will have is a mix of some basic webinars. We might have some guests on uh, over the next few months as we go into 2020. So just wanted to let everybody know who's been coming every Wednesday, uh, that next Wednesday you probably won't. Uh, see a webinar. Now, what we are doing um, in order, well, we're going to use this time, Annalisa and I, and so many other people here, we are uh, shifting our focus a little bit to developing more step-by-step -step courses that delivers this kind of content in our existing learning portal. We've gotten a lot of great feedback on our agent success plan in the learning portal and other things that they like the structure uh, of the way, you know, that stuff is, is uh, delivered. So uh, do look out for more courses there. Um, today, what we're going to do um, is we're just going to, we had a topic scheduled. We're going to talk about email marketing with KV Core in general. There's a lot to this uh, subject. And what I figured I'd do is actually dive into an old article that I wrote probably two or three years ago um, that gave a bunch of uh, email scripts. And I think that might be a good place to start around best practices, get you guys uh, motivated, see some examples of emails that might work for you. And then Annalise is going to take over the screen for me. And we're going to kind of talk about how to integrate some of these actual tactical strategies with emails uh, into your business using the KV Core functionality that exists. Sound good, Annalisa? I think it sounds amazing. All righty. So uh, what we're going to do, let me click this link. Um, and it says here, let's start with some example emails. And I'm simply going to open up this help doc um, here. And uh, I have a few notes up top, but the kind of premise of this doc is that we want to try to deliver value in our emails. Uh, so um, instead of uh, making our emails about the person, um, about us, I mean, and what we want them to do. I saw an email the other day where the guy was like, hey, I would love to talk to you about selling a house. And it sounded so much like the guy was just saying, hey, I really need a commission, so please call me. Um, where the flip side is, is that if we focus on sending actual valuable information about real estate, it sets the stage for people to want to engage with us and reply and talk to us around the real estate. And it positions us as somebody who has some value to deliver. Um, so what this article does and what I'm going to talk about is it kind of takes the delivery of value and distills it into a little bit of a formula where you can kind of use the tech to fake delivering value if you don't have time to go take actual videos of properties and, and really create unique content. Um, so uh, again, as you go through the examples, the key is to create conversations about real estate because conversations lead to closed transactions. It's about them, not you. Uh, nobody cares about how long you've been in the business. I was a little snarky here, but basically uh, <laughs> the idea is that a lot of people you know, want to send this, hey, I've been in the business 30 years and you know, tell their life story in that first email that goes out. And I understand that that can work and build rapport, um, but a lot of people don't care. They care more about what's going on in their lives. So the more we can send stuff that's relevant to what they're doing right now, uh, the types of properties we're looking at, the better is the theory here. Um, and then finally, it's okay to touch with email often if you're sending cool stuff. I know some people are afraid to send like an email a day um, because you're worried that people are going to unsubscribe. And the truth is, some people are going to unsubscribe, uh, but there have been studies done that if you actually send one a day, you'll get less unsubscribes than if you send infrequently and inconsistently, in, inconsistently like once a week or once a month or once every uh, few weeks or every few months. The people who do send every day and they send valuable stuff actually uh, will get some subscribes, and those will be the people really not interested, but the rest of those people are actually upset when they stop sending emails. So do feel okay about sending something every day if you can come up with something cool. And hopefully as we walk through these different uh, four different types of emails, uh, those will be, you'll have some inspiration for what to send. So um, 
these uh, short emails here, the first section is our conversation starter emails. Uh, these are short emails that are intentionally short with a strong expectation of response. So people feel like they'd almost be rude not to reply to you. They feel compelled to reply to you. Um, and here, here we do use some of these, I think Annalisa already embedded in KB Core. Um, yes. So uh, you might have seen these go out. You can always riff on these and change them up a little, but they're very short. Hi, thanks for visiting our site a few minutes ago. Just curious, are you looking to buy pretty soon? or just browsing. A lot of you guys have seen that. If this email upsets a lot of people, but the truth is a just browsing is a positive response because it's a live body, somebody talking to you, right? It's just designed to get them to say something. And a lot of people will say, yeah, I'm just browsing because they don't know you yet. They don't want to mm -hmm. give you their life story. Um, they're holding the cards close to the chest. Yeah, but at least they're, you got a pulse, right? Mm -hmm. you, right. You know, the, you know the email's real and you, you, you know, if you're a skilled salesperson, you can start a conversation and take it from there. Um, Home to live in or investor, thanks for accessing the property list the other day. Notice that says XYZ property list if you can refer to what they were doing. So say you know that you're paying for a property boost or you're paying for our Facebook ad service or Google and you know that you're running, uh, your ads are running, offering a list of properties in a specific city, this would be thanks for accessing the St. Pete, Florida property list the other day. Just curious, are you an investor or are you looking for a property to live in? And it could be that they are neither and they'll let you know. Um, we did a scripting one, Annalisa, with Brian Hoyleman about a month ago, mm -hmm. right? And his yep. question is very similar, and I, I actually like his. I'm probably going to add that to this article. He likes to ask people if they're a home buyer or a renter, and I think that's a really wonderful uh, way because everybody's going to fall in one of those two categories. I'll so, drop it in right now. Yeah, just curious, are you a home buyer or a homeowner or a renter? And, of course, yeah. the beauty of that one is that if they say they're a homeowner, what do you got? Uh, a, a listing lead eventually, right? If, if you can build the relationship. So um, what is this one? Uh, this one's a seller focused one. Uh, thanks for requesting info about the value of your property at 123 Main Street. Uh, I, I got a lot of responses from this question in, in the late 2000s uh, when I was using this. Uh, this, was, this was my favorite. On a scale from one to 10, what condition would you say the property was in? And I was shocked. A lot of people will let you know that their house is in crappy shape. <laughs> Or not, but a lot of people will just reply. They'll reply seven, eight, you know, like three, but I'm fixing it up. Um, so something like that, that kind of asks something about the property, but gives them a short, again, conversation starting expectation of response that they can just kind of whip off a reply by typing one number uh, works really well. And there's a lot, I'm sure you can come up with your own variations of this theme um, by asking a question on a scale from one to 10, you know, how likely are you to switch real estate offices if you're doing a real, a recruiting scenario, for example. Um, so uh, this one, subject need a mortgage. Uh, just wonder if you've been pre-approved for a mortgage yet. Here's one where you can get your lender involved. If not, my friend uh, at the mortgage company is very cool. Um, should I have them give you a call? Right. Um, here's one that you can do. So this, the mortgage one, you might send a few days into your drip, drip campaign. And if you do want to get a lender to do some co-marketing with you and contribute to, say, a Facebook or Google ads budget, you know, this is a great thing to show them and say, hey, uh, all these leads are going to get a couple of emails in my drip follow up in my smart campaign that position you. Right. And here's the example. And you can show them this. Um, so you do that one a few days in, a week or so in. Uh, this one is subject take you off the list. You know, maybe you send this one on day 90 to see if the person has a pulse. And what you'll get um, here a lot of times is somebody who says, uh, it basically says it's been a while since you opted in to receive information and we're going to make sure we're not saying stuff you aren't interested in it. We regularly remove subscribers. Are you still interested in receiving real estate info? And you'll get a lot of people like, no, no, keep sending. And they'll tell you specifically when they're planning to move. So this is a beautiful email to put in your drip campaign toward the end. All right. It does work. I, when I was an ISA years ago, that did bring back a lot of responses. So it does work. And it cleans out, you know, if somebody says, no, take me off. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually look at that as a positive because you know, the way that the ISPs and the email providers look at things is they, they want people who are actively opening your emails. So if that person has been ignoring you and not right. opening your emails, it's actually a negative single signal. So, you know, when they actually do, you take them off, it kind of makes your list cleaner and it could over time increase your chances of having deliverability. All right. Okay. So that's the first section conversation starters. How's everybody feeling so far? Um, Good. There was a, a good point Jeffrey brought up. He's like, hey, uh, you know, in the past we've talked about test, uh, text based only emails and and emails that go out with images. Uh, really, what's the difference between the two? And basically, isn't, you know, the less HTML, the less links, the less images, 
the higher the chance of it not getting uh, hung up by like a spam filter. Is that right? Exactly. Um, yeah. Jeffrey, are you are you the? I think I owe you a phone call too. By the way, I saw that yesterday. I think she was requesting one. But um, um, yeah. I think that's the thing. The HTML email is going to mm -hmm. come over a lot of times too with the images not enabled in the email client. Right. Uh, have you seen that? Like, if somebody doesn't have their images turned on in Gmail, they get this big like block without the picture showing. And that and that can happen. Like I know that if with pictures, it can. I mean, I've seen it happen on AOL, Gmail, Yahoo, what have you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, text only will get higher deliverability. Doesn't mean that you can't use fancy HTML uh, emails. Just keep in mind that a nice mix is probably going to serve you well. And I would advocate doing a short text one in the beginning. Uh, at yeah. least for the first few emails. And then when you get a little fancier, like if you're doing a really nice listing announcement, you know, on the weekend or you're announcing an open house, right. go ahead and get a little fancier. Um, like to your niche targeted folks, like if you're using the scheduled uh, mass email where you can drop in those templates, that might be a really good opportunity there. Yep. Cool. So the second uh, category here, niche focused property search emails, one of my favorite phrases. Um, this technique is very powerful. This is one of my favorite hacks. But basically, I don't know if everybody knows this, Annalisa, but any link on your KB Core site is dynamic. Yes. Um, which means that if I go to this multifamily list, any squeeze link you build, it's always going to be up to date with the latest listings. Mm -hmm. So I can actually save this link right here and send this link out tomorrow, uh, three weeks from now, three months from now. And in theory, I could um, I could build a whole smart campaign that just says, here's your updated list of multifamily homes in X area, and just mm -hmm. send the same email with the same list every few months, every yep. few weeks. And that so, comes in handy if you're gonna draw a map as well, like around a specific area, county, what have you. So it's really pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Like, here's the most walkable, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea here with the niche focus links is um, is it's always local and relevant to people if when they get this, it's interesting, even if they're not searching for the specific kind of thing you're sending. Like, if you send luxury penthouses in Center City, Philly, they might not be in a luxury penthouse um, price range, but it's still going to be interesting. Who doesn't like looking at million-dollar condos, right? Um they uh, people will ask you questions about specific properties that they find in the list. That's a win. Uh, they start forwarding your emails to friends and family who might be in the market to buy. So if they're getting these lists and opening them from day to day, um, they're going to forward them around. And then, of course, the biggest thing here by sending these is that people are subconsciously reminded that you're in real estate. They keep seeing your name attached to real estate. Some examples, um, luxury penthouse in Center City. Hi, here's a fun list of properties for you today. High end penthouse in Center City with great views link to the properties. This is just your squeeze links, right? Uh, with a simple call to action, enjoy browsing these. If you know anybody who might want to buy one, let me know with a smiley face, just kind of feels fun. And you can sign it your first name only and then have your signature underneath so that it feels personal. Um, now, I've so got a question. Yep. So if we're going to use this, uh, let's define the difference between using a link on the domain versus a squeeze. Because we can, if we're going to send it to active clients, we could we could create a squeeze with no registration, and send that to them, or we could use a link from our own domain where they will be prompted to log in. Correct? Really good, really good point. So, yeah. so if they're in, I would say that in this case, just for shortcut sake, I wouldn't might not need to go build the squeeze. Oh, you're saying right. build it with the no reg on? Right. That because if you're sending uh, it to people who are already there, they can just seamlessly. Shoop, Go right to it. Makes a lot of sense. So what Annalisa is referring to, maybe we should log in and show everybody, um, is that if you are going to be embedding these in drip campaigns. So they're currently in your database or on a drip, yeah. Yeah, when this article was written, we didn't have this technology. Right. Uh, but, right, if you're going to embed a squeeze link, you might as well, it's somebody who's already opted in, they're already in your email list. Um, you're distracting me. Well, I just came in with a Halloween costume and I lost my mind. Okay. <laughs> and the dog's barking at her. All right. Sure. And she knows better, but I think she really wanted to show me her costume. It was cool. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, <laughs> what you're going to want to do is turn off, when you build your squeeze link, the property views allowed before registration. And you're going to want to yep. make that never. Uh, never so that they're not asked to log back in. 
cool. Great point. Thank you. Okay. Next one, uh, subject KC fixers. Here's a property search today. Current look at some fixer uppers. Seattle new construction. Basically, uh, click here to check out the link. And then try to editorialize. You know what I did here? Builders often offer special incentives and rebates on their projects. If you want to learn a little bit more about how to find and take advantage of these deals, feel free to hit reply anytime. So again, we're always like giving the link and then giving them some, displaying a little bit of expertise or some kind of knowledge that we have that they can unlock by contacting us or teasing something and then uh, offering them to reply and we'll give them that information. Uh, and drastic the cool, go ahead. I was gonna say the cool thing about this, if you are working with a local construction company or builder, you could actually dedicate custom pages to them as well as special information for like trusted partners. So you could build out a whole section on your site dedicated to that partnership to include more information, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. And what's better than just sending your buyers over to a new construction and get you know they do all the work sell it and yeah. get that commission so you know you get them work it make it make sure that they get registered with the uh with the builder of course but yeah credited to you uh, drastic price reductions um here we are presenting a strategy of value keeping an eye on properties with soon price reduction could be a great way to find a nice real estate deal um something that wasn't priced right yesterday could suddenly be an awesome buy uh today due to a price reduction right so you're you're offering some value here's a link to some properties that have been drastically reduced in the past 24 hours. And I'm getting another idea here. I, you know, I would enhance this email by doing a PS. Uh, by the way, be sure to bookmark that link above. It's always yes. updated with the latest. Yeah. Let them know that it's always updated. If they bookmark it and they go to it every day, you know, it's a win for you. And then another example, of course, guys, we're just giving you like five to seven of these niche focus examples. You can slice and dice your IDX in so many different ways, hundreds of different ways. But this one is a, a school district with a price point under or over a certain amount. So, you know, figure out where there's going to be only like three or five houses, whatever that price cutoff is in a specific school district. And people are going to be very interested in the low end of that range. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to be very Cool. So that's the second category. How are we doing, everybody? You liking this content? Um, niche focus property search emails. All right. Uh, property dangle emails. What was I thinking? I'm just making stuff up as I Maybe go. Maybe you were watching Reno 911 or something. I don't know. I don't know. Dangle. <laughs> All right. So uh, basically, this one is where you uh, kind of take a listing and you dangle it you tease the listing, but you don't really mention what the listing is. They have to click over to your site to check it out, right? So mm -hmm. I, just for fun, I thought I might send you the highest price listing currently in Springfield right now. Uh, this property is in a pretty interesting location and the seller is really motivated to make a deal. Uh, there's an open house at this property tomorrow. It's priced to sell and you link them over to the open house. Um, check out this kitchen, right? If you find a really listing with a really cool looking kitchen, right? You can go ahead and send an email out to everybody and say, hey, check out this darn kitchen, right? So these would be probably not emails that you uh, send in a drip campaign, even though you could do the most expensive or least expensive house one in a drip campaign, since you would just send the list of properties sorted from lowest to highest, and you could get away with that. Uh, but these are more like mass emails that you would send to engage people and get some response right here. So property dangle emails, and then action triggered emails um and these sort of happen those automatic. are automated yeah yeah so these are uh basically if an address is no longer on the market it's reduced in price um and this is some of the behavioral automation we do that i had in the article these are probably a little less relevant than what we um would put into a drip email campaign but I think there is some value here in doing some of this manually where if you look at an old lead and you saw that they were uh, looked had looked at a property a certain amount of times, maybe you go back and say, hey, I saw you looked at that property. It did sell. By the way, it sold for this much. It was listed for this much. You know, and you want to start the conversation again. You can use the, the history and the contact record to send this kind of thing manually. Cool. All right, so there we go. Some inspiration of the kind of emails you can send. Annalise, I am now going to hand things over to you. Uh -oh. um, and you're going to show us how to do all this because I don't know how to use KVC. I am? Oh, okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> all right. All Here right. Change presenter to Annalisa. Okay, let's see. Show my screen. 
Oh, God, that's real fancy. Okay. So what I'd like to do is just kind of take everyone through where these tools are located within the dashboard. So we have the what with what Ryan just rolled out with the types of emails, and I'll show you the how and where to access now. Uh, so let me move a couple of things here. And Ryan, you've got the questions, right? Yep. Okay. So what I am looking to do first is that first I want to point out where the social media protocol is. I believe this will help a lot of folks really get into that daily habit. Uh, and it's called a simple social media pro posting protocol that generates leads and referrals. This is available to everyone via the core uh, learning portal. And you access this on your dashboard by clicking at the bottom left, this little cap. So when you click the cap, it opens up the core learning portal. Then you can click into growth strategies. And it's this tile right here, a simple social media posting protocol that generates leads and referrals. This is really dynamic, great information. And I really encourage you to, to really embrace it and take off with it. Uh, I've used these tactics in the past and I know a lot of other people have, and it really does help lend yourself to sending information that people need in order to make that critical thinking decision while they're buying or selling a home. So I really encourage you to check this out. It also gives them ideas. Uh, when we're looking to the rest of the information regarding smart campaigns, we're going to speak to all of the different ways of which you can trigger uh, an email or create an email. So the first of which is within the smart campaign, as Ryan was alluding to a moment ago, and within the smart campaigns, we're going to access that via marketing autopilot. And for those of you that aren't familiar quite yet, smart campaigns are kind of like the box that all of the calls to action, texts, emails, et cetera, like reminders to yourself, go into. And those are all template pieces. So you've got your campaign, which is kind of like that box in the shell. And then everything within, like when we look at these channels here, make this a little larger when we look at these channels it says well this campaign actually has text email call status update all within so you can actually build specific things into these campaigns now what i'm going to do is click on templates up here at the uh, top and this is where you see all of those individual pieces that you then connect to create that smart campaign Sound good so far? Any questions so far? Looks good so far. No questions. Okay. Now, as you're creating these, I really encourage you to name them something really unique. Uh, so like myself, I believe I created one called Clark County a while ago. No, I guess not. Uh, but you can actually name them such like post call email one, post call email two, et cetera, and call these something that will be um, recognizable to you as you're building the smart campaign and dropping these pieces in place. So for instance, I have like a, the Annalisa seller day four email. Well, we can look at this and basically it's just a quick market update and it automatically pulls in their name using the merge tag and I'm going to link them to a market update prompt. So this would be an example of an email I created to drop into a smart campaign. And this is also something I can pull as a one-off email if I'm on an individual contact. If I'm like, oh wait, I need to send that to them. I, they're not on that drip, but I need to get this out. I can do that easily. So to create one of these email calls to action, you're just gonna go up here to the upper right and click add template and then email template. So for instance, if we were talking about the new construction, you could just call this new construction uh, Seattle email one, right? Now, depending on your level of uh, access, you're going to have a template scope here. If you are a company admin owner, you're going to see be able to create this drip campaign, this uh, smart campaign for everyone down below because you umbrella over that entire entity. Uh, if you have an office admin or team admin, you can create something specific for them. And if you're an agent like I am, uh, you can also choose yourself. So you can actually choose the scope of which you want people to be able to access this. And then you can create your subject. You know, you can look for new, new Seattle, Seattle construction, 
uh, benefits or something like that. You know, you can name it out and then add in your content. And when you're done, you just simply go in and say if you want to include your signature or not. I always have this toggled on and then add template. So now we've created one piece of information that can be added to a smart campaign. And now I can find this again just by doing a keyword of Seattle. And you can see it brought it right up in front of me. And I can always edit it or delete it. Now, if I want to add it to a campaign, I can then go back to my campaign library, choose the campaign of which I want to add it to or create a new campaign and start building that smart campaign. And there's a separate training on uh, smart campaigns included on the uh, marketing tool here that I left for everyone. So there's a complete guide and a really helpful guide uh, from Scott Carlton where he spoke to lead and contact statuses based on action plans and campaigns. So as you're looking at all of these communications as a whole, this will help lend a little bit of the science and feel uh, for how those smart campaigns and communications work. Anything that's to add, Brian? Point. Yeah, that's yeah. an important point because you know we, we forget that we can actually change the uh, campaigns and the drip emails that people are getting based on what status they're in in, in the funnel. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's it can awesome it can be really used handily to kind of take people down that status line of like what is it like new active contact you know client and so forth and then start them over when they move again because everybody moves about 12 times approximately in their lifetime. So really, if you keep those referrals going, you've got some, some people to shuffle around, right? Or refer out if they move out of state. Uh, so let's look at the mass email. Uh, so on the KD Core dashboard, if we pop into like the smart CRM here, the second option down on the left, you have the ability of choosing a specific contact to email directly off of here a group of contacts, or maybe I want to take a look at all of my sellers that are active that have a phone number, uh, or maybe all of my people that have saved a property in the last 30 days. You know, I've created these within my smart CRM filter so I can easily find some sets of folks. And this comes in really handy when you're doing these one-off emails because you don't have to keep recreating the search. You can just save it and either opt to have it show up here or via, via that little cog I just showed you. Now, if I wanted to select a specific group, I could say, well, I wanna get rid, uh, I wanna actually talk to all of my new active people who contacted me in the last seven days. I wanna see that information. So now I have this particular uh, type of context in front of me here. You can see it's kind of darkened with this little gray. And these are all of the people uh, 20 leads, you know, or and more that have been in contact in the last seven days. And I can actually go in here and choose all of them just by clicking this little top uh, box here. Or I can say, oh, wait, you know what? I don't need to get a hold of Andrew. I can also get a hold of John and, and so forth. So you can choose who you want to send the message to and just simply go over here to mass email. And what, what it's telling me on my test account is, hey, these people are unsubscribed, which is fine on my test account here. Uh, so you can see some of the warnings and how it looks. But you have the ability here to actually look for that Seattle email and drop it in. So you can create those templates when you're creating the smart campaign pieces and pull them in and send it out very easily or write yeah, your so own you can, message here. So you could make some niche focused emails like, hey, here's the list of open houses right now. Here's the latest new construction. And then yep. quickly drop those out to, to lists like that. Yes. Uh, quick question. Somebody's asking if they can send, uh, Kathy's asked if she can send a market report that doesn't require an opt-in. Um, can, yes. can we, yeah. So if we're looking for, say like we talked to Rob and he's like, hey, I need evaluation. So all you need to do is come down this left-hand side of the dash, click into more details. And if you scroll down just a titch, you're gonna see this valuation section. When you add this information here for add a property, address and unit number, if, you, if it's necessary and save, it's going to opt that person in for that valuation 
uh, once every I think it's 28, 30 days going forward. So if they haven't opted in on the front side by going to your cell tab, you can also add it here. And again, right. you're gonna open up the more details and scroll down to this valuation section. And that's the market report? Well, that's that's the valuation, the monthly valuation. If you're looking for the market report, because it's unsubbed, I can't do this one. So let me grab a different one. Yeah. This brings up a really good point, Kathy. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Annalisa show the market report, but Annalisa, we could also show the area pages and those could make for great drip emails. I love um, the area pages. Yeah, so let's do the market report first. So like on my lead here, you can see I've got search alerts going and market reports. I don't have a campaign or a listing traffic report. So if I look at market reports, I can actually add a market report in here. And if you've created the valuation call to action, it's going to show on this list as a parenthesis valuation close parenthesis. I think what Kathy might be asking is, can she generate a general link to a market report for an area and then just send that out to everybody? Kathy, there is that, the right? mandate of the opt-in. I believe that's due to yeah. the MLS as far as so, I understand. But the workaround there, let's show the area pages because I think you can accomplish yes. something very similar. Yeah, the area pages are sweet. So I'll yeah. go ahead and open up my domain. Yep. And all of the area pages that you opted in via Web and IDX, and then it's the area pages, it, they're gonna land here at the very bottom of your site. I actually put in a request with the product team yesterday. I'd like to make this more featured in the navigation. That would um, be great. Yeah. So what we have is all of these areas that are pulling directly from the MLS of which you are connected, and it's a live dynamic link. So anytime somebody looks at this, we're going to compare it to everything that we can from the MLS and, and populate this information. Yep. And you show up top the convention. It's basically your URL slash areas slash and city. And you can also put zip codes at the end where it says ammo walk up there. Yes. Which is very cool. Now, now where this comes in with the spirit of what Kathy might be asking, um, I could see adding this to a drip campaign. Um, mm -hmm. We could even, you could even generate seller leads with a landing page. You could say, Hey, uh, get the weekly, uh, what is this, ammo walk um, market report. And you could send the, this link once a week right. in a campaign and say, here's your weekly ammo walk market <clears throat> report. You don't do anything. You just keep sending the same email. Um, yeah, and that could just be dropped into your smart campaign and either texted out or emailed alternatively. Yes. Get them on their mobile. Yep. So... Kathy, let us know. Yeah, good. She seems good with this. I would definitely, this will get the same thing done. And area yeah. pages are definitely, in terms of the topic today with drip emails, definitely something you can integrate yeah. into drip emails. And you could vary by city. You know, you have a whole, your whole market, maybe it's a county or a couple of counties. Well, and you could do once a week a drill down on a specific area. You know, you could say neighborhood of the week and, yep. and you know, link to that. And it's cool because the system will actually break those out for you. So Summers is an area within Amawak, and then these are neighborhoods recognized within Amawak. So you could be like, hey, people are looking in Windy Hill. Here's your Windy Hill update. So you have all of these different avenues to check out. And of course, it'll tell you the most expensive, least expensive, most popular, et cetera. And you also have the ability to add in information at the bottom yourself via your Web and IDX settings. Anything to add on that, Ryan? No, thank you for, for showing that. And, for uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll just answer a few questions here. Uh, Mark, I'll get you privately. And then uh, the rest of you guys, we're getting a lot of questions. We'll get to you. <laughs> awesome. Now, within this mass email, you know, you can create something or you could say, actually, I want to mass email a specific hashtags or something of that nature. So uh, let me clear my filter here by getting rid of my name. We'll reset everything. So let's say we want to send information, uh, you know, to sp specific people again. You can say, well, actually, I want to send specific information by mass email or mass text. Then you can also add a hashtag to maybe track what you sent them. So like if you started sending something to uh, like Windy Hill, you could actually add a hashtag and then just put a hashtag Windy Hill valuation or market report, right? So then you can track everyone who you are sending that to with ease. And the cool thing about these tags is as you create them, 
you're lending these tags to lists for your smart CRM, your dialer, your scheduled mass email, sending out uh, information uh, about listings by hashtag. I mean, it, the hashtags do a lot. They even trigger uh, smart campaigns and uh, listing alerts. So, you know, when you build these in, it, it can make for a very dynamic way of navigating the system. All right. Great. We had a question. Uh, Lowell uses the map selection feature often and wants to know if there's a way of saving the selection so it doesn't have to re redraw. Now, the actual link that's created can be reused over and over, right? Yes. And I've actually created a map call to action on a custom page. Uh, so you could draw a map and say, hey, we've got some information in this you know, local area. So you could draw a map like Bronx Haunt properties or newly built homes. You know, you can build these pages. Of course it is. Uh, but, you know, I must have deactivated that one. Uh, but you can build these pages out and, you know, provide these calls to action, have it all loop back to you. Like, you know, the, what is it, the Yellow Brick Road. I mean, you're like the, the person behind the curtain, right? So you want everybody to come back on the Yellow Brick Road, as many of them as you can create uh, back to you every time. That makes sense or did I ramble too much? No, it makes sense. And you know, okay. to answer the question, that's the the so you can make one link for the map one time and keep reusing it. Yeah. And I think they're really wonderful. Simply that method. down for me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. So what I've done in the past and what he's speaking to is, you know, you can do your search for homes, right? And then let's say you want to get a little more nitty gritty on your map. So you can actually go to the front side and click in to draw your map, anchor your point. Maybe they want everything just on this side of the of what, 44 and 22. You know, you can create an area and apply it. And then the link up here in your browser is one you can just copy and utilize in a landing page as a property search of the day, something specific you're going to send someone and go from there. You just gave me a great initial email, and, and it goes something like this. Hi, uh, thanks for searching. Uh, by the way, I have the ability to draw, a, to define very specific areas, right down to specific blocks and boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, would you like me to create one of these links for you? Um, just tell me, like, what, where you want to be. Because a lot of yep. people, like, a lot of us have, like, a five to ten block range in mind, especially in urban areas, right? Yeah. Uh, so, really cool. And you can also educate your contacts you can do a quick little video like a bridge page which we've spoken to like hey i saw you searched my site don't forget you can draw your own map and save it yeah so then you know then they have, they can log in they can see these things they've saved they can opt in to get the information and update it anytime and every time they go to the site you're apprised because we have the behavioral so it's always feeding you information that can be helpful so you just touched on, you know, that's another kind of email you can send, emails that touch, that explain the functionality of the website. Mm -hmm. So did you know you can do this? Did you know you can do that? Yeah, and if, I think as consumers, it really helps because sometimes they're like, oh, well, all of us, like, I don't have time right now. But then like 11 o'clock, you're like, oh, wait, I have that thing. And you, you, yeah. you start using it. So, you know, just it helps to inform them. And then when your folks save that, you know, like you can see I'm signed in here on the upper left. If I click Save Properties, you know, I'll be able to see every property I have saved. And then I can also look at my own uh, alerts. So all of this is built in for me and saving it for me as a contact on my own site, right? Yep. All right. So the next Harry, section we're going, oh, go ahead. Just a couple comments. Uh, Harry's saying he uses these links on his Google business page. I think that's a wonderful tip. Thanks for awesome. sharing. If you are doing Google business and you're leveraging Google to get the SEO, you know, juice from their their business pages. Why not drop a few squeeze links on there? Um, cool. Greg wants to know if we could do multiple cities at once for the area pages. You can't. Um, you can't for that specific feature. But you could email, you know, a couple of links. Um, our salon. That's a support question. I don't know if uh, if the market value is available in Toronto yet. I I, I know there were some issues there, um, but it might maybe fix. I would just check. Um, Uh, Jeffrey's asking about unsubscribe links, Annalisa. Do you know anything about that? I mean, I know you can manually put them in. Um, I'm so not sure. On, on, well, our communications generally do have them. 
you know, that's right. something, but if you're creating something via like um, a text or a email, so like if we go in here and we do a quick action, send email, you can always jump into the merge tags, which is this little question mark with a circle around it. Let me click that. Come on. Well, for some reason, it's not allowing me to click. There we go. For some reason, my mouse is not letting me click into that. Uh, but what it'll do is it'll give you an option to choose a merge tag for an unsubscribe link to land in here. And that uh, works on the advanced editor as well as the basic editor. Yeah, I agree though. A global setting that lets you just automatically add it does sound like it makes sense. Uh, it does, I and I, I've made that suggestion, but we can loop back to that as well with product. Cool. Uh, yeah. Is there a way to not show the map in the list of homes in the custom search? So, so were you talking about the map on the front side? Yeah, I think when you were doing the map search. So if you're doing yeah. a map search specifically, it's going to show the map, right? It yeah. will. I haven't heard of a way to disable the map. That would definitely be a support type question. Well, what if you drew it and then switched to list view? Would that work? I am not sure. Let's take a look. Let's try it out. You can just draw right there, right? Well, I wanted to clear the 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 um, thing I had open. Yeah. So we'll look in Warwick and a map. All right, so we'll just draw an area. Oh, good grief! And it is very re uh, responsive. You can see it uh, took me right to a property I didn't mean to click on. Okay. All right. So let's say that's our area. Yeah. And we want to finish it up. So we have 36, 36. results. Yep. I don't see an option to actually go back to map or, li uh, or list or list grid. You, huh? If you scroll down, yeah. it's not there. All right. No. Well, that's a great point. I would love to be able to turn this into a list view. So let's, I don't, that should be an easy one. Let me, I, I just made a note over cool. here. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go over and speak to the scheduled mass email. Yep. So scheduled mass email lives within marketing autopilot over here towards the bottom right hand side schedule and email. And within this, you can use the basic email editor, which is basically what you're probably familiar with as, you, as you've been building templates for your smart campaign. Uh, but you also have the ability to create a scheduled mass email uh, with the advanced editor. And there's a completely separate webinar on how to learn how to use that. Uh, basically, you just click in here to schedule an email and you're going to choose a date it goes out. You can even get down to the, the time. And everyone you have added to a status or a type of contact or a hashtag is who is going to receive this content you're creating. So you have the ability to really get down there and parse who's going to receive this. So you can click on schedule email. And then is it going to be sending to people from a saved filter on your smart CRM? So maybe I want to send something to my uh, builders. Uh, oh, that's not what I'm looking at. That's a filter. So we can look for a filter here. So maybe it's going to go to my saved properties in the last 30 days. Maybe I want it to go to a specific hashtag. So maybe it's a, some Bronx people or new construction or what have you. Or I can determine a specific status overall, which could be a quite a few folks. Now, again, based on your uh, access level, you're going to be able to choose the scope of this message. So be you know careful on what you choose here. And then you can choose the time and date of which it's going to send. And this is based on Eastern Standard right here. So whatever you choose here is reflecting 3 p.m. East Coast. So do the math in your head or write it down like I do sometimes because I my mind's like, nope. Uh, and now from here, you can also choose a template you've created. So I could choose my new construction Seattle email and drop it in here as well. Or I could switch to my advanced editor, knowing that when I do that, and if I've started in the basic, it's going to can everything that I've created here so far. So you'll start over when you get into your advanced editor, 
and start building from there. And if we're going to look like if you're going to do text in here, if we drag it, drag a text box in, what you'll do when you start typing is you're going to see your merge tag list here. And this is where you can pop that unsubscribe URL in. I'm not nice. sure why it didn't pop from on the basic one a moment ago, but that's what it'll look like. So this could be even something you just, you know, have copied or saved as like a hotkey as while you're typing, you just press your hotkey, it pops and you keep going. It might be easiest that way as well. Any questions on schedule and email? Uh, no, there's a question. Let's see here. Uh, is there a way to print out your smart text code list? Greg, I would just do a screenshot, use Lightshot screenshot. That would probably be the best way to print that out and then print the, print the image. Um, Are you talking about uh, custom text codes? Yeah, he just wants a list of his custom text codes. So I think that would be the easiest way to get to kind of yeah. print them out. Yeah. You might be able to copy it, like highlight it and copy it and drop it into an Excel sheet or a Google sheet. It might, part, might like, delineate it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, I'd have to mess around with that a bit. Um, Lisa has a good question. Uh, we're on a team platform and when we schedule a mass email from the admin, uh, Oh, uh, it's showing the signatures of, of the assigned agents when they do a team mass email. Is there a way to receive, remove the signature from the mass email? Well, this could be a couple of things that could be happening. So when we're looking at the scheduled mass email, it's really important the person who is crafting that message to differentiate the scope. So if they're popping in here and just typing away, they might even be choosing themselves uh, or their team. So they have to be real careful on what they're choosing here on the scope of selection. And also, when they drop this in, they can opt to have the agent signature off just by toggling this little guy at the bottom left. And then they can also click in to the merge tag. There it goes. A and then they can drop in, like, I, I think we get the team in here now. Yeah. So they can use the merge tag for team information that's team specific right here. Does that help, I hope? Hopefully. Thanks, Annalisa. Uh -huh. let Lisa let us know. Cool. All right. Now let's talk about direct email. We touched on this a little bit at the top uh, right hand side of the dashboard within quick actions. Send email. This same tool is going to be here at the top right. No matter where you are within KD Core, this will always be a static section here at the top right. If we're looking at a specific contact, and maybe you're reviewing notes, just got off the phone with them, said you'd send something, it's super, super easy to send a message to someone via the contact of, at the top right as well. So you just click send email, and then you can either choose your template or start typing, uh, use your merge tags to drop in specific information, et cetera. Okay. Now, these last two are a little fancier. This is when it comes down to using API Nation or Zapier to send information outgoing if you're going to use something like uh, Constant Contact, MailChimp, and so forth. So these like third-party outgoing messages. So some, a lot of people use API Nation and Zapier to, to push stuff into KD Core, but you can also push things back out. And Ryan, do you want to speak a little more to that? Yeah, so we'll talk first about the why behind uh, why we might do do this. And one of the big reasons, and what we're talking about is basically taking your new leads in and putting them into a third party uh, email marketing provider. A um, few reasons for that, you know, if you have something like Constant Contact or MailChimp, where all they do is deliver email, you might find that you get some additional features uh, mm -hmm. around reporting, you know, seeing when people open, uh, segmenting and sorting. So a lot of people like to use them for that uh, reason. There's also some newsletter functionality that some of these solutions have. And also, you know, um, KV Court, we, we take pride, it, we back up our servers, we, we do everything we can, but you know, nothing's 100%. Um, so if your database is your business, um, and you know, you realize that having this contact list is an asset that could serve you for years to come. Uh, it might not be a bad thing to just back up into another provider like a MailChimp or a Constant Contact, just in case 
you know, the worst happens and our servers explode or something. I don't know. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but, uh, but yeah, so um, what you can do, um, we have a bridge set up with API Nation. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe we recently added some tiles, as Annalise is showing there, dedicated oh, they look great. Yeah. Yeah, to some of these providers, where you can go in. I believe each bridge, uh, the Facebook one is free, but the Constant Contact and the MailChimp are $5 a month. Um, yeah. Through API Nation. And you can automatically send your leads into those providers. So uh, if you want to show that, Annalisa, it's fine. We don't really need to go too deep in. It's basically a wizard when you click yeah. Learn More. And you can just connect your account um, to, to those different providers. Yeah. And what it'll ask for is your username, which is your email of which you use to sign in. So it'll be at the top right of your dashboard. Use that email and then your password for your dashboard and connect and away you go. They made it very, very easy to make these connections and get things rolling. Yeah. So, yep, um, definitely not a bad practice, especially if you have a huge database to, to back up into these third party providers and use them here and there to send uh, emails. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, and basically, KV Core is built in a way that you can integrate with almost anything that has an API or is hooked up to Zapier.com. Now, if you right. want to integrate with something that's not constant contact or MailChimp, say you're a SendShark user or GetResponse or any number of the other uh, email marketing providers, you could use Zapier.com for that. Right. And if you want to learn more about API Nation, more about Zapier, it's really easy to do via your dashboard. You can either click into the support portal here, which is this little question mark. Or if you're in chat, you have the ability to keyword search right here. So you just pop into chat and you could type in Zapier and nice. click the arrow and away you go. Uh, and it's going to say, hey, how do I configure these? Where do I find my key? You know, so you'll be able to click on these and get the answers immediately within your dashboard. You don't have to go anywhere, which is super handy. So Great. this is where you can find the key and also you could do the same keyword search for API Nation right here as well. Great. Yeah. So we're pretty good. That's kind of the advanced next level stuff. But uh, overall guys, the doc has the link to those inspirational emails. Uh, bottom line is try to set up your drip campaigns and send one off mass emails that deliver value. And uh, KV Core gives you uh, a number of ways to do that. You can talk about individual properties. You can send those niche prop those niche focused searches. You can send tips and tricks for how to use the front end of your website in general. For example, how to build your own map search. That's a great email to send in the first few days, right? Point out some of the functionality to call people back in. And of course, we didn't mention, you can always create your own content and do custom pages and blog posts uh, embed YouTube videos in your blog posts, things of that nature, right. and then email that content out, but always land people back into your KV core ecosystem. And so. that comes in handy when maybe you did like a lender review or something, you can use those hashtags, track people, send additional information. So again, it's, it all connects back to the KV core for sure. Yep. Okay, well, if there's any other questions, guys, let us know. Um, otherwise, as I said in the beginning, thank you, Annalise. That was, you, you do a way better job on the functionality than I do, so thanks for being here. We, we compliment each other well on those things. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, guys, we will see you soon. We'll be back probably. I know we're planning a very, uh, we're planning a lead generation general webinar soon. We're just not going to be doing the 2 p.m. Wednesdays for a little while, uh, but do keep an eye on the Facebook group. It's at insiderealestate.com slash Facebook group. We'll take you into our Facebook group and uh, we are always putting fresh content there and we'll definitely let you know about webinars in the future. Awesome. Thanks everybody. And I hope you all have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye. Great. Thanks everybody. Thanks Jeffrey. Bye-bye.